It's strange to think about how one small decision can change the course of your life. From choosing a different route on your commute, to oversleeping and running late, the choices we make shape our destinies in ways we may never fully comprehend. In this video we'll find out that even a simple wrong turn can be life-altering. This is the story of Riley Strain. Riley Strain is a bright 22-year-old from Missouri. He is known for being a kind, outgoing, and charismatic individual who stands tall at 6'5". Riley studied as a business finance major at the University of Missouri, where he was an active member of the Delta Chi fraternity. Riley was in his senior year and set to graduate in just two months. He was known to balance his love for sports with his dedication to his studies, a testament to his commitment and discipline. Riley was not just defined by his academic and athletic achievements, he was also an intern at Northwestern Mutual, a position he hoped to continue post-graduation. Riley had a lot of things going for him and it's clear that he was a very intelligent and driven young man. Riley's charisma made him popular among his classmates and fraternity brothers. He was raised in a loving home and maintained a close relationship with his family, speaking to them several times a day. He had even begun talking to a girl and while things weren't serious yet, this was an exciting time. On March 8th of 2024, Riley and a large group of his fraternity brothers headed to Nashville, Tennessee for a spring fraternity formal. The group booked their stay at the Tempo Hotel by Hilton, which is located a stone's throw away from the bustling nightlife of downtown Nashville. Some of the fraternity brothers were underage, so the group split into two. The underage members then headed to a nearby bar that caters to an underage crowd where they would spend the evening. Since Riley is 22, he went bar hopping with the other half of the group. By all accounts, Riley's evening began joyously. The group started their night at Miranda Lambert's bar and spent about an hour there. They then walked over to Friends in Low Places Bar and Honky Tonk, which is a bar owned by country singer Garth Brooks. Here, Riley called his mom over FaceTime at around 7.30 or 8 p.m. He appeared to be having a great time and even sent her some pictures of the two bars they had visited. At this time, he did not seem overly intoxicated. The pair exchanged a few more texts before Riley's last, which simply said, I love you. This affection was not at all unusual from Riley. The group eventually ended up at a bar called Luke's 32 Bridge owned by Luke Bryan. This is a popular bar on Broadway approximately five blocks from the hotel. The bar is absolutely massive at 30,000 square feet. It features six levels, eight bars, two restaurants, and four stages with live music. In addition, it has one of the largest rooftop bars in the area. Riley bought a single $12 alcoholic beverage and two waters. It remains unclear how much he had consumed at the previous bars. We also don't know if anyone else had bought a round, which wouldn't have shown up under Riley's tab. They remained at this bar for about an hour and 45 minutes. But the night took a turn at approximately 9.35 p.m. when Riley was escorted out of the bar by security. The bar stated that this decision was based on their conduct standards, although the exact circumstances remain undisclosed. The story goes that Riley was trying to help someone which led to a misunderstanding with the bar's staff. This led to the bar staff feeling as though Riley had too much to drink, and as a result, they had him escorted out. Security footage of the incident exists, but it has not been made public. Once Riley's friends realized what was happening, they allegedly tried to follow him but were stopped by the bar staff who insisted they pay their tabs before leaving. However, this account has been disputed. You see, others have claimed that this specific bar requires you to pay as you go, not allowing tabs. The bar staff also later refuted the allegation of stopping any patrons, a point we will revisit later. Regardless, by the time Riley's friends managed to get everything settled, Riley was nowhere in sight. One friend managed to reach Riley via phone, who assured him he was heading back to the hotel. Given the short distance and clear route, it seemed a straightforward journey. It only should have been about a 12-minute walk. His fraternity brothers, reassured, returned to the bar and resumed their evening. But the next day, a chilling realization dawned upon them. Riley never made it back to the hotel. Despite his love for adventure, Riley was not one to disappear without notice. His Snapchat location had stopped updating, and their calls were going straight to voicemail. A sense of unease began to settle among the group. At approximately 10.30 a.m., they decided to reach out to Riley's family. They explained the situation and asked Riley's family if they had heard from him. Unfortunately, they had not. The family, now alarmed and states away in Springfield, Missouri, instructed the fraternity brothers to immediately report Riley missing at the local police station. 
Then Riley's family immediately packed up and embarked on the long seven-hour journey to Nashville, filled with a sinking dread. The fraternity brothers were now in a state of panic and quickly made their way to the police station. However, they were met with an unexpected hurdle. They weren't able to enter the lobby as it was closed on weekends. At 1.46 p.m., one of Riley's friends called 911 to report him missing. 911, what is the address of your emergency? Hi, um... I don't have an address. Um, I'm trying to file a missing persons report, and the police, the central police uh, is closed, and the sheriff's office said that we couldn't do it there. Who is it that you're wanting to report as missing? It's We're here on a fraternity formal trip. It's, it's one of my good buddies. Okay. What is his name? His name is Riley Strain. Riley, R-I-L-E-Y, Strain, S-T-R-A-I-N. Okay. Is he white, black, Hispanic, Asian? He's white. He's white. Uh, Twenty-two year old, six-five blonde. Okay. And what was he last seen wearing? Outside of Luke Bryan's bar last night at like ten, and then the last time his location on his phone was by the sheriff's office at like eleven p.m. Okay. And what color clothing was he last seen wearing? He's wearing jeans, boots, and a, bla a half black shirt, half brown, light brown. Okay. And you said it last showed outside the sheriff's department? Like around that area by the river, by the sheriff's department over there. Does he have any life-sustaining medications or disabilities? No. You said he, he has a phone, so it's a cell phone, right? Yeah, it's an iPhone uh, 15 Pro Max. We'll get an officer out to you as soon as we can. Please tell us back if something changes before they arrive. The police began their search by reaching out to hospitals and jails, hoping for a logical explanation to Riley's mysterious absence. Unfortunately, the search for Riley yielded no immediate results. The police were unable to find a record of him in any of the local hospitals or jails. Left with no other options, they began gathering surveillance footage from the downtown area, hoping to catch a glimpse of Riley after he exited the bar. This is when they stumbled upon a grave mistake made by Riley. After leaving Luke's bar, Riley went across the street and tried to enter another bar. However, this bar denied him entry as they had just seen him escorted out of Luke's bar. This is when everything went terribly wrong. Riley headed off, but for some reason he began walking in the wrong direction. Presumably he was just mixed up, but this one little decision would alter the course of Riley's life forever. Riley made his way down 3rd Street before making a right onto Church Street. Before we go further, we must address something that has caused a significant amount of confusion and misinformation. The surveillance footage, which is the cornerstone of this investigation, was initially released out of order. This muddled the narrative, leading to a myriad of incorrect reports and unfounded theories. This is actually the first video. It was captured by downtown Smoke and Vape Shop's security camera at around 9.45 p.m. For reasons unknown, Riley suddenly starts running. The footage does not show anyone chasing him, which makes his sudden sprint even more perplexing. However, there is a theory put forth by Riley's family. Two men were seen at the intersection in an escalating argument. The tension between them was palpable and it soon exploded into a full-blown fight. Amidst this chaos, Riley happened to be passing by. The family believes Riley saw the altercation and tried to avoid it. He walked behind a nearby food truck to avoid them. The family has since reviewed additional footage from the food truck and confirmed that Riley was not attacked or involved in the fight. They were able to see that one of the men from the altercation suddenly took off running in the direction of a fire truck. This unexpected movement seemed to spook Riley, triggering his sudden sprint. The footage becomes increasingly difficult to watch as Riley's run takes a horrifying turn. His feet appear to slide out from under him, causing him to crash into a concrete pole. It looks as though Riley hit his head pretty hard. He falls to the ground and lays motionless for a time before struggling to his feet. As he continues on his journey, it appears he is holding his head. This brings into question if Riley possibly sustained a serious head injury. According to an article by Johns Hopkins, some of the symptoms of a head injury include confusion, dizziness, problems with balance, nausea, memory issues, blurred vision, fatigue, and difficulty walking. This new piece of information adds another layer to the mystery surrounding Riley's disappearance, painting a clearer picture of the events leading up to it. Riley is then picked up by a different security camera less than a minute later. Even in this footage, Riley can still be seen holding his head, adding to the growing concern that he was injured in his fall. At one point, he appears to look at his hand, possibly checking for blood. 
The footage is hard to watch because Riley is stumbling and clearly not doing well. Riley's family, upon seeing the footage, immediately claimed this is abnormal behavior for Riley. This raises suspicions that Riley may have been drugged at some point. This theory, however shocking, is not without its merits. There have been whispers around town of similar incidents of patrons being drugged at bars in the area. Now, whether these claims hold any weight is up for debate. It's also possible that Riley is stumbling due to a head injury from falling. But one thing is for sure, this new revelation deepened the mystery of Riley's disappearance and fueled the urgency. The surveillance footage next captures Riley at 9.47 p.m. crossing First Avenue onto Gay Street which runs along the Cumberland River. In this video you can see everyone else at the crosswalk waiting for this white van to pass, but Riley just keeps going. This video is particularly hard to watch because Riley is surrounded by so many people and yet so alone. Around this time, Riley sent his last known text message. The recipient was the girl he had been seeing. She had asked him how he was doing, to which he responded, Great Lops. Many have theorized what Lops could stand for, but most likely he simply mistyped LOL. But something was off about this text. Riley was the kind of person who used emojis and exclamation points in his texts. This message was out of character, causing the girl to text back asking if he was okay. Unfortunately, she never received a response. Riley continued down Gay Street, and at 9.52 p.m., he had a brief interaction with a police officer. This encounter was not discovered until later, but it fits into the timeline here. The officer had been called to Gay Street just south of the bridge because there was a report of someone smashing car windows. The officer's body cam footage shows Riley walking past him, as well as their brief exchange. At this point, Riley was still alone. He seemed to be doing better in this footage compared to the previous videos. But with that being said, we can't be sure if he was truly doing better or if he was just putting on a brave face to avoid getting into trouble with the police. The officer later stated that Riley did not appear to be in distress. In fact, the interaction was completely normal. Many people believe that Riley can be seen running at the beginning of the video but slows down once he sees the police officer. You can also hear something that kind of sounds like footsteps running at the beginning of the video. How you doing, sir? I'm good. How are you? Good. It's over here on Gay Street, uh, near First Avenue North. After their brief encounter, the police officer continued walking further down the street. The body cam footage shows him turning around after about 30 seconds, and Riley is nowhere in sight. The officer stayed in the area for about 45 minutes after this, and did not witness anything out of the ordinary. Riley's sudden disappearance from the camera has led to numerous theories. Some even claim they can hear Riley at the 19-second mark saying, You tried calling me or you following me, indicating he may have seen someone he knew. Others believed they could hear a car door shutting at the 23 second mark, suggesting Riley had gotten into a car. The internet went crazy with these theories, but we would later find out that Riley was seen on one more camera. After this, Riley walked north towards James Robertson Parkway and the Woodland Street Bridge. This area is a quieter, less traveled part of town, with the river being a little bit slower and more shallow. It's known for housing a fairly large homeless community. It was around this time that Riley spoke to his friend, letting him know he was heading back to the hotel. This is the phone call mentioned at the beginning of the video. However, tragically, he never made it. The camera caught Riley walking under the Woodland Street Bridge at 9.57 p.m. He then stops at a lamppost for approximately six to seven seconds and does something on his phone. Then he continues walking north towards the second bridge, which is the James Robertson Parkway Bridge. While this footage hasn't been released, the last time he's seen on camera is when he passes this yellow sign. Many have theorized that Riley stopped to look at the GPS on his phone. 
Based off of this, another theory has emerged. Riley was staying at the Tempo by Hilton Hotel, which was to the west. But there is another business across town called Your Tempo, which is a software company. This business is just past the bridges, leading many to believe that Riley had accidentally put this into his GPS instead. Shortly after this, Riley's phone stopped pinging and he disappeared without a trace. While it hasn't been officially confirmed what caused Riley's phone to stop communicating, it wasn't due to the phone simply running out of battery and dying. As the investigation continued, fears began to mount that Riley may have fallen in the river. The Cumberland River flows west through Nashville and spans 688 miles, flowing down from the Appalachian Mountains through southern Kentucky and Middle Tennessee before eventually connecting to the Ohio River. Many feared that Riley was disoriented due to an intoxicated state or a possible head injury. Others theorized that Riley could have left the path to relieve himself or gotten ill and perhaps lost his balance and fell into the river. The search operations ramped up with boats equipped with sonar technology, foot patrols along the riverbanks, and drones scanning the area from above, all in a desperate attempt to find any trace of Riley. The urgency of the situation was palpable as everybody came together to look for Riley. Then, an anonymous witness from a nearby homeless encampment came forward with a disturbing tale. I uh, seen the guy that went missing, he come, came down through here. Fox 17 News speaking exclusively to a transient man who lives along the riverbank, right where Riley was last spotted on camera per police, near the James Robertson Parkway Bridge. We heard a commotion, we looked back up, he almost fell over the last bush right there, caught him. He was very, very, very I mean, intoxicated, I guess, I mean, he was stumbling hard, I've never seen anybody, I've never seen anybody stumble that hard before. The man telling me he didn't check on Riley since someone else was already there. I yelled up, they said, uh, no, he's just drunk, he's okay. This claim, however, raises more questions than it answers. No one was seen on camera with Riley, and no one has come forward to admit they were with him. So that leaves the question, was this person just a random passerby, or maybe the friend Riley was on the phone with? We don't know exactly what time this happened, so it's hard to say with certainty. As the public grappled with the news of Riley's disappearance, Many turned their attention to Riley's Apple Watch. Known for their advanced technology and impressive water resistance, Apple Watches have been instrumental in solving numerous cases in the past. Because of this, many hoped Riley's Apple Watch could hold the key to his disappearance. Their hopes were bolstered by the fact that Apple Watches are far more waterproof than phones. This means the watch could have potentially preserved critical data, even if the phone was damaged or lost. But unfortunately, the investigation was met with another setback. Riley's watch did not have the location services set up. Luke Bryan posted his sympathies to Riley's family on March 15th. He and his bar released a public statement confirming that Riley had purchased only one alcoholic drink and two glasses of water, according to their surveillance footage and receipts. They also stated that one of Riley's friends had escorted him to the Broadway Street exit and then returned. They disputed any attempts to prevent anyone from leaving with Riley. The Tennessee Alcoholic Beverage Commission announced plans to investigate if there was any instance of over-serving at the bar that night. The question of whether Riley was served excessive alcohol while visibly intoxicated remains a critical part of the investigation. On March 16, a 911 call reported a body floating along the Cumberland River. The authorities were quick to respond and successfully recovered the body. It was clear right away that this was not Riley. A cause of death has not been released for the man, only that his autopsy showed no signs of foul play or trauma. Meanwhile, a woman who works with the homeless community in the area reported a peculiar encounter with a young man at a local encampment known as Tent City. The man was riding a bike and seen wearing a dirty pair of jeans and a dirty zip-up jacket. This was a stark contrast to the clean button-up shirt he was wearing which made the shirt stand out even more not to mention how unique the shirt was. She later found out about Riley's disappearance and when she saw his photo, she was absolutely shocked. The shirt Riley was wearing on the night of his disappearance eerily resembled the one she had seen the man wearing. However, the man was not Riley. This unexpected lead added another twist to the already convoluted case, leaving us with more questions than answers. The woman reached out to some of her fellow volunteers to see if anyone had pictures from that day. While they all remembered the man she was referring to, unfortunately, nobody had a picture of him. Another local man became concerned about the implications this discovery would have on the homeless community. He was concerned that any allegations could incite trouble or even violence against the homeless community. 
Because of this, he took matters into his own hands and decided to conduct his own investigation. He ventured into the encampment, questioning its inhabitants. It was then he discovered that one of the men did indeed possess a shirt strikingly similar to the one Riley was reported to have worn on the night of his disappearance. This individual had allegedly found the shirt hanging on a railing along the path Riley had taken on that fateful night. Although there was a bit of vomit on the shirt, it was otherwise clean. The man had simply wiped the shirt off and kept it. What was particularly strange about this discovery was that Riley was seen further along in his journey still wearing his shirt, and there is no evidence to suggest he backtracked. That left the question of how the shirt would have gotten to where it was supposedly found. Riley was also not known to wear a tank top under his shirt, so this would have left him completely topless. In a surprising turn of events, we later find out this was all just a crazy coincidence as Riley was still wearing his shirt when he was found. The next big update came on March 17th when two women were doing their own independent search. They were live streaming near the river when they made an ominous discovery, Riley's bank card. The card was found near the bridge but down a rocky embankment which had three drop-offs. This was not an easy place to get to, leading to questions about Riley's ability to navigate the terrain in his condition. A ten-foot-tall retention wall sat ominously behind the area, but there was no indication that Riley had fallen over it. What's strange is that this area was already searched several times. However, due to the rocky terrain littered with trash, it is plausible that the card was simply overlooked in the initial searches. The heavy rainfall had also caused the water level to rise significantly during the initial searches, potentially obscuring any potential clues. Still, this leads us to the question, why was Riley's card found here? Some suggest that perhaps Riley may have put his bank card in his shirt pocket and then it simply fell out. However, Riley was not known to do this. He owned a Michael Kors billfold, which is similar to a wallet. He was said to have loved this billfold and always carefully put his card back in it. Nevertheless, it's important to keep an open mind. It's certainly possible that since Riley was drinking and actively using his card, he might have simply put it in his pocket. Regardless, the card was now found leading one step closer to solving the mysterious disappearance of Riley Strain. The police happened to be nearby searching for Riley with canines when the card was found. Because of this, they were able to quickly secure the scene. One thing that stood out about the card was that it was surprisingly clean for being left out in the elements for nine days. Questions arose as to whether Riley's case would be changed to a criminal investigation in light of the bank card discovery. A Metro Police spokesperson stated, We do not have any evidence pointing to foul play at present. A GoFundMe was started for Riley's family which raised a large amount of money to help them stay in Nashville until he could be found. Tragically, the search for Riley Strain came to an end on March 22nd. A worker from a nearby cement and concrete manufacturing company discovered his body in the Cumberland River in West Nashville. This is approximately 8 miles from downtown. 911, what's the exact location of your emergency? Yes ma'am, I'm at 1740. Uh, 61st Avenue North, Nashville, Tennessee. Um, I, I just... 61st Avenue North in the nation's office of Tennessee? Yes, ma'am. And what happened? Uh, my company works on the river. I have just found a uh, dead body. I believe it to be Riley. Okay. And you said you guys found a dead body? Yes, ma'am, in the river. We are no barges at this facility. What does it look I was like? checking around my dock. Uh, it's definitely got a person hair, black shirt, kind of like a white, muddy looking on the front. It's face it's down in the water. Shirt. Yes, ma'am. It's, it's a Caucasian. It looks like a male. Yes, ma'am. Okay, is he right on the like the um? What is it called? Yeah, he's on the front of my uh, work barge. Uh, I'm at River Marker 184 on the Cumberland River. You said River Marker 184. Yes, ma'am. Okay, one second. My company has requested only uh, police and rescue personnel only on site. All right, so I already have this call up. Um, I have it at 1740, 61, 60, I'm sorry, 61st Avenue North in the nation's office continuum. What is the name of this? Is there a name on the building or? Yeah, it's a, there's a sign out front. It's uh, Holston. You said Holston, H-O-L-S-T-O-N? H-O-L-C-I-M. Okay. Well, is he completely submerged, or is he right on that, like, the, the bed? Not the bed, but, like, is he partially in the water, partially out of the water? No. He's, he's fully submerged besides his, his uh, back sticking out of the water. 
I actually had to move a log off of it off of the head to confirm it was a body. Okay. I have this call up and I'm gonna get somebody out there. Okay. No, all right. I'll, uh, I'll meet them up top. I'm gonna make my way up from the river here in just a few minutes. Okay. All right. I'll let you go. All right. Thank you. Uh huh. That same day, the police held a press conference where they shared their initial findings. They stated there was no evidence to suggest anything other than Riley accidentally falling into the river. He was found with his clothes, watch, and other identifying items still on him. The police further clarified that there was no evidence of trauma related to foul play. An autopsy was to be carried out to determine the exact cause of death. A detective present at the autopsy examination stated that Riley's death continued to appear accidental. However, the toxicology results are still pending and the full autopsy report will not be finalized until all testing is completed. We are left with many unanswered questions. But amidst all the theories and speculations, let's not forget the heartbreaking reality. A young life was lost.